Hello YouTube and welcome to the Awesome Blackness channel, or ABC for short. My name is Mighty, and on this platform, I'm going to explore the awesomeness of our black people. That's right, whether you're big or small, celebrity or civilian, anywhere in the world, if you're awesome, you're featured here. And it's time to drop another nugget. My second daughter is a kid after my own heart, and she doesn't fully realize it yet. Or does she? Save for the fact that she's a girl, she is the spitting image of me in just about every way. Even going so far as to have no hint of her mother about the face, which I'll just say, so far you're doing better than me in that area, so run with it, middle child, so enjoy that complex. Deathly afraid of clowns in the dark? Well, I mean, I was. I can watch either versions of It in my darkened home theater. So, like me, I give her until about 15 at the latest. Additionally, she has budding musical and vocal talents. That part also comes as no surprise, though. Two of my sisters can sing. Not only did I play cornet in middle school, but I can also hold a note or two. Psych, I'm not singing for you. And my father was part of a blues group, or I think he convincingly impersonated a member of a semi-popular group at the time. I don't know, this lore is crazy, and I'm just now getting insight on it. This man has a lot to unpack. I guess it also doesn't hurt that I literally named her after a musical instrument, which brings me to an important PSA on the power of a name. You know, my people have a way of creating some interesting things to name our babies, and this isn't a dig at anyone who may have one, by the way. Furthermore, I'm not even implying that your name has to be application friendly just to function in this society. We don't care if you literally pull together consonants, vowels, and a few apostrophes and threw them into a salad of moniker uniqueness. I just believe that at the minimum, the answer should be at the ready when someone asks. So what does that name mean? Because that element is important. And it may seem like a slight or some form of microaggression, depending on who's asking, but not really when you think about it. As just about every person in history had a name that meant something. All my daughter's name Names mean something. In fact, the little one, my third daughter, when saying her name in its entirety, it's like literally speaking an affirmation. This is major because my wife and I struggled on, among other things, what to call her up to hours after she was born. This was a first for us, as naming her big sisters came naturally, again, among other things. However, once the first name was established, the middle name, which also doubles as an acronym, came almost freakishly fast. And just confirm, we had agreed upon the right one for her. Something to think about, that's all. Okay, off the soapbox. And back to my middle baby and how deep her musical inclinations go. The first hint that she was a prodigy came when she was about to four. Taking the whimsical lyrics created by my big girl, the producer, my baby effortlessly created a scat that remains my wife's ringtone to this day. Apart from that, or her preternatural ability to pick up a melody to any song on the radio and harmonize accordingly, remember that beat at the end of the video on Ava DuVernay? That was her messing around on the music app on my iPad. She was seven at the time. And while I just may buy her a set of turntables and an MPC, because remember I'm a boomer, so no new Mark decks and MacBooks here, we're keeping it pure. She should probably get a bit of history on the music she's about to embark. And aside from the video on the illustrious and multifaceted Kim Hill, what better reference than the person featured here? Spinderella is an American DJ, rapper, producer, and actress, best known as a member of the hip hop group Salt and Peppa. Her stage name is a reference to the fairy tale character Cinderella, born on the 3rd of August in or around 1970. Depending on the source, Deidre Muriel Roper of Brooklyn, New York, was one of five children. Her early influence in music began as a child, fascinated by her father's record collection growing up. Her career as a DJ began during her sophomore year in high school. She began dating a local DJ who she learned techniques from. Shortly thereafter, she then marketed herself as a DJ in the local area. At age 16, Roper was approached in school by a classmate who asked if she would be interested in joining an all-female rap group. The classmate knew Herbie, Big Love Azor, and arranged for Roper to audition for him. This group was, of course, 
comprised of Cheryl Salt James and Sandra Peppa Denton. Azor introduced Roper to the girls just before the group were due to appear at the Westchester Music Festival in late 1986. The group's original DJ had missed several rehearsals and appearances, and the group was actively looking for a replacement. However, and this is a fun fact, Salt and Peppa had offered the spot to a then unknown radio and TV personality, Wendy Williams. Needless to say, they accepted Roper. They would go on to make history, selling 15 million units from five studio albums, several platinum and gold singles deriving therefrom, earning nominations and awards to include the coveted Grammy honor, become the highest selling act of all time, male or female, and take the undisputed title of the first ladies of hip hop and rap. You know, I remember when this group came on my radar, the entry point of which being the concert video, Push It. Ah, double entendres. After being inundated with the likes of LL Cool J, Kid and Play, and Run DMC, seeing a group like them was a pleasant surprise. And while Salt and Pepper were out front giving the energy and flavor, for me, it was all about Spinderella. And if I could only slip a glass Air Force One on her foot. Sorry, um... You know, I don't even know who I'm apologizing to anymore. She was dope because firstly, her stage name was the cleverest one I had heard up until that point. Simple, catchy, the fitting, pretty much summed up the overall sentiment of the group, like a woman riding her customized Harley, and it doesn't come off looking silly or try hard. Secondly, she was not only legit on the ones and twos, but she could spit too. As there were peaks in the group's tenure, so were their valleys. To include a hiatus, reunion, disbandment cycle or two in the 2000s and 2010s, and also accusations that warranted legal action. Although the latter of which is tea for another channel, I'll briefly go over the former. In about 2001, Salt announced her departure from the group, citing her disillusionment with the music industry. With the trio having met their contractually obligated album releases and their label filed for bankruptcy, unfortuitous as it was, that seemed like no better time to break ties. Side note, despite her departure, Salt would embark on a solo career of sorts into uh, Christian music of all things. You know, I remember distinctly her being on Kirk Franklin's Stomp, and my first impression was, yeah, I kind of got that vibe from her all the time as a kid who grew up in the church myself, which was cool. However, apart from the appearances on songs to include tracks produced by, in all its irony, former 3-6 Mafia members, not much more to include a full-fledged album came from this venture. Anyway, as for the whereabouts of Spinderella, in addition to DJing at various clubs, she worked as a radio personality in the Los Angeles market from 2003 to 2006 and in Dallas from 2010 to 2011. She also appeared in several episodes of the VH1 reality series, The Salt and Pepper Show, in 2007. Yep, during a time where reality TV was all the craze and just before this very platform killed that noise. Suffice to say, it was also during which time that the group reformed. The on-off again pairing from 2009 through 2018 would result in other appearances on TV, including the drama field Ladies Night on BET, among other things, culminating on May 3rd, 2019, as a DJ broke news in an IG post that she had been terminated from the group as of January of that year. There seems to be no love lost between between the three, which is unfortunate, but expected for people who've been part of each other's lives for so long. Roper resides in Dallas, Texas with her only daughter, who appears to be walking in her footsteps, and as of 2019, a grandchild. Now here's where I would have inserted an obligatory man of old realization, but I'm just too tired, probably because I'm old. Additionally, she is also part of the American Diabetes Association Celebrity Cabinet, a TV One unsung ambassador, supporter of Saving Our Daughters Mentoring Program, and founder of the Spinderella DJ Academy. So guys who's paying for this, answer so what makes her awesome is apparent. Spinderella is a pioneer, part of a legendary and historic group that gave way to the female artist that followed in the years to come. It was also awesome that they could step into a realm dominated by men and hang without overcompensating either way by becoming super butch or hypersexualized. It was almost as if they entered the space and were themselves. My only wish is that they were able to settle their differences and really go out on top together. Nevertheless, what cannot be denied or diminished is Roper's contributions to the group in particular, producing several songs on their albums and of the culture as a whole. Now all my baby has to do is discover all my unreleased music and she'll be on her way to musical greatness, hopefully without much drama. Okay, so thanks for watching. 
one more video to go to not only wrap up this wonderful time of the year, sorry Christmas, but also embark on my break from the tube to work on some other projects, and I save the best for last. Kind of like when the dessert is brought out after a full course gourmet meal. FYI, that was as strong of a hint I've ever given. Now let it digest. In the meantime, if you like what you've seen, keep the love coming the best way you know how by liking and sharing. Get more people to like, share, subscribe, and click that notification bell so you know when I'll drop another nugget. And until then, this is DJ Galaxy, and I want you to say awesome.